I actually feel quite sad for the day where we just plug our brains directly into the mainframe and never leave our house. One of my former bosses said to me, before you ever create a great customer experience, you've got to create a great employee experience. And it turned out that the front end of this guy's car had been wiped out by a bus. How could you write a book on the learnings of Genghis Khan and deploy it to startups with butter on it? Hey everyone, welcome back to CX Insider with me, your host, Marcel. Today, we explore the crucial yet underlooked impact of audio quality on the employee and customer experiences in our digital age. We're joined by the COO of Iris Audio Technologies, Tom Darnell, who kindly took the time to share these eye-opening insights. Now, if you want to find out more about Iris, check the links in the description. And if you like the podcast, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel for CX Insider's best content, or share the episode and leave a comment down below. By the way, this podcast is brought to you by ACF Technologies. Now let's jump in. So, uh, hey Tom, thanks very much for coming on the podcast. Pleasure to have you. To start off, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, thanks. Pleasure to be here. Um, good to see you guys again. And I'm Tom Darnell. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Iris Audio Technologies and more commonly known at the moment as, as Iris Clarity, which is a voice isolation software for contact centers and a number of other enterprise use cases. Audio comms for Formula One and NASCAR and IndyCar, which uh, Formula One was our kind of origins back in lockdown. Yeah, I guess we're a startup moving to a scale up and it's exciting times for our business. Yeah. And you mentioned before that um, you've been kind of through a few grand reinventions. Do you want to tell us a bit about that and kind of the history of the company, how it's come along? Yeah, the company's always been Iris. We started life in 2018. Jacoby Anstruther, who's the, the CEO and founder, had this vision for an audio company that would revolutionize the way that we, we process audio as human beings. There's a lot of science behind how our brains are neurologically active in that process of of, uh, of hearing audio, particularly in the live environment. We see a lot of brain activity in the live environment. You know, when we're speaking now, you can hear me, the sound waves are bouncing off all of these surfaces yeah. and arriving at your ears and your brain is heavily involved in, in processing that information. And Jacoby was building a business based on software around um, how we bring digital experiences more into the real world and for an activation of that neurology on uh, on streamed audio or, or any digital audio. Mm -hmm. um, we worked with Goldsmiths University to prove that, a, a scientist called Joydeep Bhattachara. And we started building a business. I joined him at the end of 2018 to, to help shape that. We packaged that software, which is called Iris Engage, into a headphone product, the Iris Flow headphones. And we launched those at the start of 2020. And within three or four weeks, we were plunged into the deepest, darkest depths of, of a COVID pandemic. Yeah. But in that moment was actually the, the realization of the immediate need that we needed to solve for, for people as it relates to audio. And that is communication is um, its productivity, its focus when we're on a video call or mm -hmm. any other format is suboptimal because of the environment that we see ourselves in. We call this the uncontrollable environment. Um, so how can we bring control to that? And it starts by removing background noise. So we pivoted our engineers to solve this problem of background noise. Um, so you are left with nothing but the, the focal point, which is obviously the voice, allowing us to have more productive, more focused conversations with, with better outcomes. And mm -hmm. You know, as we looked at the market, what market really stood out to us as being super important for this was contact centers. Um, 15 million agents globally. How can we improve the experience, not just for the customer at the other end, but also the agent themselves? And, you know, the technology is all built off of AI and bi-directional. So you need it at the call center end for both participants to benefit. And it sounds like Iris was essentially really in the right place at the right time to solve those problems. And obviously the way people use uh, and consume digital audio has changed a lot in the last few years. And that has also changed the importance of such uh, technologies. Could you maybe go into a bit about how that's changed and, and why that has really boosted the need for your software? First of all, in terms of in terms of just music, let's let's look at that. We went from a situation where you had an incredible amount of data on a on a big plastic disc called an LP yeah. or a record, yep. and then we crushed that down to a, a CD, yeah. fifty meg or something like that, and then uh, and then we started to to stream music, and you know that was something like ten factors smaller in in size. So essentially, you lose the fidelity, you mm. lose the detail, and that's the same with you know, anything that's recorded and, and streamed, the level of fidelity and therefore our connected nature to that audio stream is is diminished. So that you've got that dynamic. Then you've got the dynamic of virtual working, virtual communications. I actually feel quite sad for the day where we just plug our brains directly into the mainframe and never leave our house. But no <laughs> doubt, you know, 
COVID accelerated that yeah. virtual way of working particularly towards us and it showed companies that they can be more productive in that virtual setting. So rather than shy away from that, how can technology enable those kinds of uh, work patterns to be more productive and more like a team working in one place for one common goal? And you know that starts with audio. If we lose the video stream, on a Teams or a Zoom call, you know, you can still be productive because you can hear the other person. In fact, many people join those calls when they turn the video off because they don't want to be seen anyway. Yep. But if we lose the audio, there's not much work that's going to get done. So how can we elevate that experience as it relates to audio? Because in our experience, audio is often the thing that's left till the end and the thing that's not focused on so much, which is a shame because that's where the value is. The value is in the content of the words yep. that we are speaking and that's where we're relaying ideas and information to a better outcome. So, so no doubt the world isn't going to turn around again now. You know, we're not going to go back to that, you know, physical all the time. People are going to be on less flights. They're going to be working in this way. In terms of the contact center world, I think you probably all experienced this. When you are speaking to a company now, you've got automation, chatbots, and they tend to handle some of the more simplistic queries. When voice steps in, which is still there, and actually the number of call center operatives uh, started to grow again through the, through the pandemic, 15 million seats globally today and something like 18 million within, mm -hmm. within five years, they tend to be the more complex, higher value, higher pain point queries Therefore, we should match that level of premium nature of the conversation with the experience in terms of the audio. And again, that's where we really see an opportunity in that market in particular, call and contact centers. Tom's made it clear that the role of audio in our lives is not only extremely important, but often profoundly overlooked. Why is that? As we take a closer look at the deep connection between human experience in the modern age and the consumption of audio, let's consider the current landscape. Groundbreaking software like Iris Clarity is specifically tackling this issue, yet still their efforts are unknown by many. What sets them apart from the competition, like the built-in solutions from Teams or Zoom, and what value does their vision provide? As you entered into the pandemic, there weren't solutions, yeah. you know, now, you know, Teams has got that, Zoom has got that, Google Meets has got that. We're not trying to compete with them. Iris Clarity is a, is a desktop application for Mac and for Windows that does do that same or, you know, similar function. Our own internal research testing in comparison shows that we do it more effectively than those solutions. <laughs> but, you know, that's not our battle to, to go against. That's not where we win. We win by being a software that seamlessly integrates with the plethora of UCAS and CCAS platforms mm -hmm. in the cloud where you can immediately resolve background noise as a challenge in your contact center environment. Uh, and that goes for whether you're still working at home or you're working back in the office. If you're working back in the office, you know, you might have a hundred people around you that are all doing similar calls and you can all relate to that experience where you speak to a call center and it's just a you can barely hear what they're saying. Yeah. By the way, it's the same for the agent because you're not in a predictable location, right? You're out and about, daily life's going on around you. You might be taking a call from your insurance firm while you're in a coffee shop or just walking down the street or around your family and noises there. So we can fundamentally transform that experience for both sides of the call. And we've proven that that reduces average handling time. So there's an immediate cost benefit to the, to the company deploying this. It improves the employee experience. It reduces mm -hmm. the neurological fatigue. Um, they might be doing tens, if not into 100 calls a day. It improves the customer experience. So you get a better CSAT score for those that are familiar with the buzzwords in the industry. And ultimately, that's going to lead to better commercial outcomes. Yeah, our game is not to compete with big tech. It's to provide a solution that retrofits, essentially, and works seamlessly with the array of VoIP and cloud services that are out there, but uh, but important use cases like blue light, an emergency situation, clarity of communication is vitally important. Mm. And by removing some of that background noise, you can really get to a better outcome. So quality of audio really just transcends any uh, layer of customer experience. Exactly. And it's, I think that's such that, a big part of our world, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Every aspect of our day to day life, whether it's phone calls and you know, online calls with colleagues or like you say, interacting with brands. To me, it's, it sort of feels like the last few years, it's just been brought to the surface. Like it really wasn't a thing we even considered before, but now it's absolutely fundamental. Like we need to look at the future trajectory of how important it is in our day-to-day -day lives, but also for brands.
Speaking of which, our sponsor ACF Technologies specialise in providing CX software solutions that enable things like video appointments, queue management and booking systems to run seamlessly, being tailored to your company so you can focus on the more important stuff, like audio. Follow the link in the description to discover more about what ACF can do to transform your CX. A lot of our you know, listeners and viewers of the podcast are all in positions where you know, they're responsible for either shaping the customer experience in the immediate or also looking at the future strategies. And what's your thoughts on like the general trajectory of the importance of audio? Is it going to continue? Because it's obviously gone through a massive growth phase last few years. Do you think it's going to continue in that trajectory? Basically? Well, look, we're, we're talking on a podcast. Yeah, right? true. <laughs> so, you know, and I know that, I know that, you know, this will go out on YouTube, uh, yeah. but it will go out on, on the various platforms similar to, to our podcast that you kindly joined, Greg. Um, mm. And, you know, audio is so vital but the key insight before clarity was even a conceptualized product the bedrock of what we built this company around was audio not being an afterthought mm -hmm. but being the primary thought when you're building propositions that are around communication entertainment whatever it might be and it's quite a shame really that, that we almost took a backwards step mm -hmm. why is it that television screens went from you know fuzzy things to 8k definition yeah. mm. yet the audio is like coming out of some rubbish speakers yeah. in the side yeah. of the thing it doesn't make any sense you know that's the vision for the company and what we truly believe in i mean i don't know how deep you want to go on it but also <laughs> audio is is can be harnessed for our mental well-being you know there's a lot of research into how music activates centers of the brain that mm -hmm. are un um, uh, stimulated by other me medium and, and music really lights us up and and all audio does particularly in the live environment it's why we drift off on those online meetings right because it's just like oh you know just a drone in the background yeah. i think people can all relate to in the lockdown when we were like on six hours of those things a day that's fatiguing that's really fatiguing. And a lot of that is to do with the fact that the audio, you're not in the room. You're not present as a human being. So and I think that's continued as well. Because like, I'm not sure about you guys, but like at least a couple of days of my working week are at home. And most of that is on calls. So I think it's, even though we have started to return to office working and stuff like that, if you take the work work setting, a lot of it's still still six, seven hours a day, at least on calls. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's needed in that respect, I'd say. Reduce the stress. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's so many techniques and, and we've talked a lot about it with some great experts around around hybrid working and virtual working. You know, the importance of taking a regular break, removing yourself from that environment, taking a walk, maybe listening to some sort of um, well-being soundtrack. You know, there's a lot of science. This is just a fascinating area around mm -hmm how we can activate our neurology through through different types of audio. And, and we were fortunate enough to do some fantastic research with, with Goldsmiths University that explored our technology. But, but, you know, broader than that is about how, you know, audio can really be a, a source of well-being. And, mm -hmm. But it all starts with the quote, like, make sure you've got a decent set of headphones, yeah. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to be listening to that stuff all day, don't have a crackly speaker on you, like, fix that stuff, you know, because otherwise, you know, you just – you're just subjecting your your brain to some really poor quality stuff. You wouldn't put, well, I don't know, you might put poor quality food in your body, but you know, you don't <laughs> want to pollute your ears and your brain onwardly with a, a poor uh, audio experience. It will fatigue you much more rapidly. Iris Audio Technologies recently released a white paper on the role of audio in a digital world, in which their vastness of research findings broke down the problem and its major impacts on both employee and customer experience. Let's discuss some of their key stat takeaways and how they provide clarity to our understanding of audio in CX. You know, they're, they're, it really pins on on three killer stats. 89% of agents find, this is in the call center space, find background noise impacts their ability to perform. So let's look at that in the moment. Okay, so it's, if it's hard to hear the, the customer, that's going to obviously make your ability to do a good job diminish. But let's look at the knock-on effect. If that's 100 times every single day, that's going to affect your your ability to um, to really enjoy your job if you don't feel like you, you can focus I mean, I couldn't do that job. Fundamentally could not do that job, have a massive appreciation mm -hmm. for people that do. And what we see as another stat that knocks on from that is 69% of agents tell us that background noise is actually affecting their mental well-being. Let's unpackage that a second. This is an industry that has 40% plus employee churn. And I bet you there are, you know, hopefully this sparks some inspiration for, for companies to, to dig in. But you know, I know mental well-being has been such a rightfully a massive focus for us. 
um, more so in recent times and it needs to continue to be. But, you know, let's look at the root causes of some of that mental fatigue. Um, so that was the, the second key stat that we yeah. really discovered. From a pure ROI perspective, 85% of agents told us that it resulted in wasted time through repetition. And we actually did some work to really kind of dig into that ROI situation. Even if you're just wasting 10 seconds a call on repetition, if that's a two minute call on average, that's a significant yeah. amount of time. And it wasted. all adds up as well. And yeah. it just adds up. And then so you start to layer these things in. Average handling time in the moment is affected longitudinally. You're affecting your employee well-being. Ultimately, that increases employee churn. The cost of replacing staff, particularly in today's market, is highly expensive. So, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. And, and as you said, Greg, you know, people can download that white paper with the link that will be here or somewhere. Um, <laughs> or anywhere, anywhere you want it. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, that's free and people can just digest that. And, you know, it's the first study of its kind with that quantity of of agents in the UK and the US and also customers. So we, we surveyed both to get an understanding of this. What do you think is like the importance in terms of like the long-term brand implications? Every interaction matters, no? And therefore, how does that play out long-term? You're absolutely right. I mean, we talk about whatever your measure is, net promoter score, CSAT, mm. you know, all of these different things. You know, no doubt there are, we're always trying to chase down that quick KPI yeah, nudge, yeah. right? But yeah, and you yeah, know that can true. be achieved. You know, if we reduce average handling time, you're going to see an effect on that in a matter of days. Um, but longitudinally, you know, CSAT, knock on to net promoter score or whatever it might be, that's going to be uh, your customer referrals, your loyalty, uh, repeat business. Um, and these things do all, all add up. And I think like we touched on earlier, the nature of conversation when you are speaking to a physical human being on a call they tend to be these higher value moments so imagine that experience now so you've gone to your uh chat bot okay yeah you know where's my delivery call this number or we're connecting you to an agent or whatever you know the the automation might lead to you know a higher touch mm -hmm. point so you, you might have had a good experience up to that point okay yeah okay you've channeled me to the right way and then suddenly you're speaking to it you can't hear what they're saying you have to relay your postcode, actually quite complicated to get that yeah, across. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that can have that one moment in that journey and a high value potential moment, mm -hmm. you lose that brand. Yeah, that it can a, be really that, make or break. That was a disaster. I hate dealing with them. Whereas if you transform that into, you know, another good experience, mm -hmm. it's the difference between a happy customer and a, and a frustrated customer. We've touched on the long-term implications that poor audio quality in your products, services, and especially communications can have on both brand perception and stakeholder experience. Following on into the future, what predictions does Tom have for the current digital environment, and how does he see the role of audio evolving in the CX space? But mental well-being is a big one. Yeah, okay. absolutely huge. Yeah. Um, I think the industry kind of was one of the first to grapple with home working. Th those contact centers had to continue working through the pandemic. So they were amongst the first that had to uncover how to do this. And it isn't necessarily good enough to send a laptop and a headphone out to someone. Are you paying for their Wi-Fi? Yeah. Again, you know, we've spoken to a lot of a lot of people around, you know, what's the touch point with their manager? You know, uh, so I think mental well-being and, and how the industry is really supporting staff is important. I think there are so many different technologies out there, so many different automations, ways that we can manage call workflow and all of these sorts of things. You know, speech analytics is clearly continuing to be prolific. There's a lot of cool things out there. And what I quite like is that we got a little differentiated thing mm -hmm. that we can um, that we can plug in pretty much across all of those solutions. But yeah, I mean, other key learning points. There's a lot of money spent on soundproofing, by the way. Is so there? That, loads of money. What in contact centers? In contact centers, or, how do yeah. they get partitioning up? You know, if you're a BPO and you've got two clients that are doing, we had one that we were speaking to, they were doing um, support for a sports gambling company. Mm -hmm. And on this side, raising money for a research company for a charity. Slightly different. Right? <laughs> They had to put partitions and we were like, yeah. well, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't have to invest that mm. capital expenditure. You can invest it in, in a different solution. Um, so lots of challenges around how you staff your your uh, your operation, technology, and I guess hardware yeah. <laughs> in some kind of way to resolve those challenges. I think staffing is a big, still a big trend. With that churn, how do you staff your operation? I, I still think it's yeah. probably an important employees market at the minute uh, i think you know a lot of companies not just in those positions but more generally are probably you know having to work a bit harder to attract and keep their talent problems that businesses should continue to be need to sharpen up on i think actually yeah
employee satisfaction, employee experience is a huge topic, I think, across the board. So mm. I'm, I'm glad that you sort of raised that because everyone we seem to speak to, regardless of what area they're responsible for or what, what sort of role they play in the business, just the satisfaction of their staff, whether they are even customer facing or not, it all has a knock on effect down to the customer. That employee is not satisfied, they're less productive. Less productive just means they don't produce as great an ideas, which does eventually impact the customer either way. One of my former bosses said to me, before you ever create a great customer experience, you've got to create a great employee experience. And it's so true because, you know, if your team are hacked off, they're not going to do a very good job for you. And ultimately that's going to leak out into, you know, the way that we interface with, with customers. Yeah, exactly. And what a wonderful opportunity though, that digital and software and different solutions presents to companies of all size, right? You guys know this, you, mm. you, it's a leveler of the playing field in a big, big way. Yep. And actually the opportunity in the real sense for smaller companies, and we talk about this, is you, you have an opportunity to be way better and more agile than some of the bigger companies that are yeah. out there because mm. they're stuck with infrastructure that's old and you know, it would take a lot of effort to get that out and put something new in that industry is moving towards the cloud then he's hurry up yeah <laughs> yeah honestly <laughs> we have to really understand and embrace what the hybrid model looks like yep i think that's crucial uh, and i think that's a maturity from management but also from staff what really irritates me we're doing a virtual call because it's a friday but all of us were in the office the day before we could have done the meeting around the whiteboard yeah. Now, there's a maturity leveling up thing around everybody in that. Similarly, I think management need to, you know, accept that this is a way that you attract staff now. A lot of people want to work work remotely. How do we make that productive? Well, then arm your teams with the tools and the capabilities needed to be to be effective and be productive. And, you know, that whole customer journey piece and making it feel like it's your brand that's definitely your last point is really i mean one of the main things i think that companies are going to be focusing on because it's harder to to win customers and keep them right now so you got to do the best you can across all touch points i think that is going to be a focus and how technology enables that will play a massive part thank you for listening we hope you enjoyed the podcast and if you did why not subscribe to our youtube channel for access to full-length videos and youtube shorts you can also like share and comment on the episode to keep the conversation going if you want to join our growing community of thor leaders head over to linkedin and follow us at cx insider podcast to stay updated thanks again i've been marcel and i'll see you in two weeks but for now enjoy our rapid fire questions and by the way this podcast has been brought to you by acf technologies the global leaders in customer experience management solutions so my first question is, would you rather listen to music or a podcast? All oh, music. Yeah. And uh, who's your this favorite? This podcast, obviously, before music. <laughs> music. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> uh, who's your favorite artist? I'm a big fan of Muse. Um, I want them to go back to their kind of raw uh, beginnings, but stop doing this experimental stuff, but Muse. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Let's get them on the podcast and then uh, we'll, we'll chat to them by it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Invite me back if you get them on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, what's one thing you're looking forward to doing this year? Oh, um, near term, we're moving into our new office, which is in the same building, but a slightly better location overlooking Oxford Street. So we'll get some nice. good people watching. <laughs> okay, cool. Sweet or salted popcorn? <laughs> salted. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> With butter on it. With butter. Not even mixed? No. I mean, it's literally the worst moment of my life if you're reaching in and it's and it's a mix and then you get that sweet one. Yeah. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Are you more of a minimalist or a hoarder? Minimalist, definitely. I used to be a hoarder and then realized that that was not good for my, for my Gigi. So I, uh, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm a minimalist. Okay. Would you rather travel a hundred years in the past or the future? A hundred years in the past. Yeah. Why is that? The future is quite terrifying, really. Mm. I'm not bought in. Um, <laughs> this whole notion of the metaverse and plugging our brains in, like I said earlier to the mainframe terrifies me and I'm, more into the human connection. And I think a mm. hundred years ago was probably where I should have existed. And and if you were there, where would you, where would you go? What would you want to see most? I'd probably be down in the basement serving some rich dude with a top hat. <laughs> okay. um, my dream would be to be in some sort of, I don't know, Westworld-esque scene and be a bartender. Nice. I don't, I just, I don't know why that came to me, but <laughs> it must be true. It came to me quite, quite fluidly. You yeah. like customer service? That'd be a great, yeah, exactly. be a great yeah. world to be a and then my final question, we usually ask this, if you could interview anyone dead or alive, who would that be and why? Oh, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, wow. I'm trying to think of something edgy and it's really not coming. <laughs> I'd like to interview Genghis Khan. Okay. Why was he such a cruel 
so and so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Genghis Khan. Why did I think of that? I think I was looking at some history of him the other day. Mm. He seemed like pretty ruthless. So yeah, that would def definitely be an interesting podcast. Yeah. How could you write a book on the learnings of Genghis Khan and deploy it to startups? I'll research that. <laughs> yeah. We'll do a podcast <laughs> yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Do you have any funny stories of taking calls or doing meetings in funny places because of the audio? <laughs> because of bad background noise or anything like that? Oh my gosh. I, okay, I'll tell this one, which is slightly a little bit. So I was I was in a car mm -hmm. and I was joining with with Hands Free and there were a couple of other people. This was back in the day where it was called a bridge, a conference bridge. Okay? Oh, yeah. And uh, there was a few other people joining and there was somebody delivering some content and was quite timid. It was one of, they were quite new to the company. So they were delivering some content and uh, they were presenting and there was quite a lot of say, it was quite boisterous salespeople in their car, or whatever. And then all of a sudden she, she'd presented and all of a sudden someone, you know, are you some sort of, yeah. <laughs> yes, you. And it turned out that the front end of this guy's car had been wiped out by a bus. Oh. And this girl thought he was directing the, abuse at her. she was like well i'll be quiet then <laughs> so anyway sometimes it's better to find yourself a more convenient location and i definitely i don't think people wow. do it so much anymore join a conference call from a car it's like a little bit but it used to be a big thing sales reps out doing the, the yeah. morning meetings you know and you'd group and see what the the plan of the day was but yeah i don't recommend that so his something. car just got got wiped out by a bus yeah the front end of it was taken Bad. off by a bus and that, well, that played out amazing the, the call, call didn't end yeah, they could, if they had clarity, we'd have never have known. Yeah. <laughs>